Hello, this is Jared Sprague, and I am going to show you how to install, configure, and test the Services Content Lock module, uh, which is the sandbox module that I, currently is a sandbox module. Um, I'm going to show you everything step by step uh, from beginning to end. Um, so, what I have here is a completely fresh installed Drupal 7 to the clean database. Um, and nothing installed, it's just vanilla out of the box. First thing I'm going to do is install the dependencies. So the two main dependencies are services and content lock. Um, we, al we also need the libraries module because we're going to be using the REST server, which is a sub-module of services, and C tools, which is a dependency of services. And just as a side note, we could use the XML RPC mo module, which comes with services as well, but I just find the REST server much easier, and all my examples use a REST interface. So, first thing we're going to do is download these. And then enable them. Next, we're going to enable the REST server now that we have services installed. All right, and now we are going to uh, get the services content lock module from Git, the sandbox project. I'm going to clone it right here the modules directory. Okay, now going to enable that. Cool. Now I'm going to change directory into it. And then I'm going to Oh, the next step is we need to create an endpoint in services in order for this to work. And I provided a sample endpoint um, that you can import directly uh, into the services. That's located in the example subdirectory. And you can open it with your favorite text editor. Um, it's called endpoint import.txt. Just copy everything in there, then go over here and log in as an admin. Go to structure, services, and then click on import. Paste that in, continue, and here it is imported, but we still have to click save for it to take effect. And I just want to point out that we're going we use session authentication which is um, which basically just means it uses the same authentication as you would logging into Drupal it uses the cookie uh, they have to have a valid Drupal session cookie and in order to use this um, services has a, a plug you can create plugins for different authentication schemes and stuff but just for testing we're going to use this because it's the simplest so then you click save, and now we have an endpoint created here. And if you just uh, for demonstration, if you click on it, you'll see that the content lock resource is present and enabled, and that's what this module provides. Close that. Oh, and I'll also point out one quick thing to um, uh, really quick the content lock endpoint you edit it this path right here that's the path that you need to put into the rest um, URLs when you're when you're testing this and I'll, sh I'll point that out later on in the bash scripts that we're going to be using for testing okay so now that we have that the next thing we need to do is get our session cookie out of um, the cookie itself. So in Chrome, it's easiest to just use the developer tools. You can use other type of cookie inspectors, but I find this works pretty well. It's just this is the 
we just get the name of the, the cookie name and the value. So uh, double click on that, copy it, come back over here to the services content lock folder, and then um, change directory into the examples folder. You'll see I've got some example bash scripts here and this script called setcookie.sh. That's where you're going to set your current active Drupal session cookie. So edit that, your favorite editor. We're going to have to replace the example values with the key value that you have. So from that name, I'm going to put in the one from here. Right here. There we go. And fix up the spacing problems here. And then the value, we'll paste in the value right here. Fix that in. There. Now this is a key value of the current Drupal session cookie that will get sent. So we get authenticated through the REST server. Okay, so save that. And now we should now just quickly show you what uh, one of these scripts look like. Let's look at the create one first, which will create a lock on node. Open it with an editor. You don't have to change anything in here, if you're, but you, just to look at it. Basically, it, it will run that script where we just set the cookie, make sure there's a cookie set. This actually you might need to configure if you have if you're using something other than localhost, you'll put your Drupal host, set this to your Drupal host. And this endpoint is matches what we imported from that when we created our services endpoint, um, the path variable. So it's service content lock API. We put that all together all together into a curl command. It sends the cookie. Um, and then it sends post data the content of this lock.xml file, which is in the same directory as this. Uh, and then and then it sends it to the content lock resource. So uh, just to point out, here's the lock.xml file that I just showed you. It's very succinct. <laughs> it just has a node ID in there. So then, okay, let's just run this. It's executable. So just lock create boom we have a content lock on that now it's got a, a you know it worked because the response was 200 okay and then it has the data from the response here it just says locks successfully created on node one so just to point out how what that does now if I go to a different browser go to Firefox and log in as just the normal user who has edit rights, go to the node one ID, try to edit it, boom, can't, it's locked. All right, and so then if you come over here, back to our shell, let's try, let's run the uh, retrieve to find out data about the current lock. Get a 200 OK response, and then it returns some XML defining what the current lock um, data is the node ID, the user ID of who locked it, the date, timestamp when it was locked, an Ajax key which you can ignore. That's for the UI, and the name of the person who locked it. Now we can delete it. 200 OK. Box successfully deleted on node one. Now, if I come back to this user, he wants to edit it again. He can edit it now because the lock has been removed. And this user through the UI has now also placed a lock on it. So then, just as a reverse example, as this user, if I come back, um, since I'm based on the cookie that I set in that set cookies file, which was the admin user, if he tries to create, or you know, just any user, he tries to create a lock, can't. He gets a 409 conflict and, the, and a result saying node one is locked by user one and then it tells you the amount of time or the, the time when the lock was created. 
So if he says, oh, okay, well, I'm just going to try to delete that lock now. Again, he gets a conflict error. He can't delete. It says, cannot be, this cannot delete the lock on node one owned by another user, user one. So in other words, people can't delete other people's locks. If you really, really need to delete another lock, you can log in as, as a super admin and then co the co through the content lock module, you can forcefully take locks from other people if, you're, if you have the right permission set. But through the service, you, can't, you cannot delete a lock that is owned by a separate user or a different user. So that is about it. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs>